Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to talk about applying the things that we learned at the training we got uh, from uh, John Saunders at Saunders Machine Works. All right, so aside from all of the great training we got on uh, Fusion 360, one of the best parts about having the week at, uh, at John's shop was the time on the machines themselves and looking at the process that he uses when uh, he goes through uh, not just the design stage but also in the, uh, the production stage of parts. Um, there are a lot of great tidbits that even a small shop, home, used, you know, home hobbyist, uh, people who are still learning uh, the trade uh, can apply right away and it's going to make things a whole lot easier for you. So let's start by talking about um, about the the setup itself, right? So one of the first things um, that I did when I got back is I ordered some tool holders. Um, why do we need tool holders? Well, for the longest time I've just been using collets, right? Collets work great. I've used collets for lots of different things and um, you know, they, they uh, run pretty, pretty true. Uh, I've got two different mills, the CNC mill and a manual mill. They're both R8 spindles, and they work great. It allowed me to go back and forth, change out uh, cutters as needed. The downside, especially with CNC, is that in order to get accurate, repeatable measurements, you've got to go through this process every single time you do a tool change. It makes It's very inefficient, right? So I ordered some uh, tool holders. Now I already have some that are uh, the Tormach, the TTS style uh, tool holders. For instance, I've got this guy right here, right? Shearhog. It's great. It uses a three-quarter inch shank, right? So the nice part about these is your collet stays in the machine, right? All you have to do is loosen it up a little bit. It seats, and you always have a nice repeatable height. Right? So every time I put this in, I know how high this is going to be. So this gets us to our next step. The next thing was, uh, why is this important for CNC? Well, what this allows you to do is set offset libraries. And so I set up uh, a set of libraries, uh, or a, a library on my, my setup, and it did speed things up. So what did I do? Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. because. The Tormach system is great, right? But if, you know, for the CNC setup, and it has several different parts to it, it's about $800 right now as, uh, as of today. So it might be a little pricey for the average home shop you know, guy, guys building their own setups, things like that. Um, that being said, I'm probably gonna buy one because uh, you know it, it's one of those things that, frankly, from a convenience and from a um, efficiency perspective, over time, it's definitely worthwhile. And I do, I mean, I, I kind of bridge that gap between home shop, hobbyist, and job shop, right? I take the small jobs that the bigger job shops won't take on, uh, just because it's not effective for them. So what did I do? Well, I got a set of R8 tool holders that use a locking mechanism, right? And I got 11 of these different tool holders. Um, my total expenditure wasn't that much, right? Because I you know, got them all um, as a set. These are from Shars. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who will talk you know, up or down about import uh, tooling, but my experience with Shars in particular is they're pretty good. It's not you know, tool room specific, but I mean, they even have some stuff that's really well well made. Um, I mean, like very precise stuff, but uh, you know, just for these, I think uh, these were about 15, anyway, they range anywhere between 15 and, and uh, $20 a piece, right? Um, you can get a kit that uh, you know, brings the price per tool holder down quite a bit. So now that I've got, you know, a bunch of tools in tool holders, what I have are tools that are at set heights now. So, then I had to go through and start building out my library. So let's take a little bit closer look at, um, at some of these things because now that I have the ability to hold tools, 
Let's look at why this is important. Okay, so the next phase in all of this, and I apologize, but just kind of got things laid out um, so I can think through all of the operations, is basically what we're making are the, uh, these, actually, this, this part here. Um, it starts with uh, two inch by four inch by half inch stock, right, so it's half inch. And we've got a few different operations that we're gonna do. So um, you'll see there's a hole for this, hole with counter bore, so we've got a spot hole, um, get that to, to size. Uh, we're gonna face it uh, first, actually, so uh, do that. And then we'll flip it over, throw it on the jig, do all of our roughing operation, and then the engraving uh, part. So what that entails out of all this is, so we've got the super fly, right, we'll fly cut the top. Then we'll use a tool here from Lakeshore Carbide. Uh, this is a quarter inch, it's a quarter inch mill drill, um, but it's a, uh, it's got a, ooh, I don't remember what uh, angle that one is. Part number is 17DRLML14. I think that's a 90 degree uh, tip on it. So great for spotting, um, and that'll get, us, uh, that'll get us started. And in a pinch, it's just deep enough to where if I have to, I can use that to actually do the drilling as well. I don't want to do that, but in a pinch, it didn't do the job. And I've got two of these just in case I screwed up. Um, the overall diameters I'll have to, to rough in, but basically, so face it, spot it, we've got just enough, with a quarter inch drill here, we've got just enough uh, clearance to, um, to, to fit everything in there, just the, the, how long that quarter inch drill is. really wish I had a stubby quarter inch, to be honest, which is why I'm considering just using the spotting drill and actually using that to go all the way through because that's not the diameter we're going to use. We're actually going to go in and adaptive clear the proper diameters um, and then um, do a uh, 2D contour to do the cleanup on that. And for that we're going to use this 3 16th uh, high helix um, 3 16th. So that gets us to our first setup. Right, everything's done for our first setup. Now we flip. We've got our in there in the camera, we've got our jig. So flip it, get it on there, rough the outside. So I'm gonna use one of our new Niagara tools that we just got um, that were donated from, from Niagara. This is a four flute three eighths uh, um, roughing uh, end mill. So I think that'll do a good job of hogging off the metal. Because remember we're starting from this rectangular block. Right, we need to end up with that uh, that shape there, right? So we we'll use that three eighths rougher. That should do a great job at uh, doing that, um, clearing that out. I'm um, next step. We've got a three flute uh, AccuPro one eighth inch ball mill, and so we'll use that. That's what the client requested. Uh, so we'll do the engraving on that. And then I'd like to go through, I'm going to put this tool back in, that quarter inch um, V tool, or sorry, the, um, the mill drill, because I'll, I'm going to use that as a chamfer tool, and I'm going to go in and just deburr everything. Um, I might make, depending on how it looks, I might actually make a second jig, because it, this one's set for the counter boards and everything, but... I might make a second jig or soft jaws to be able to flip it over and go through and clean up and deburr the other side too. So um, that's what we're setting up right now. So what I've got to do for all of these, for each of the end of the holders, I've got to get them cleaned up, get the uh, end mills uh, locked in place, um, make sure they're secured, and then go through the process of measuring everything so I can get my tool offsets in the library. Once I know now that I know which tools I'm using, I can also go into uh, Fusion 360 and start doing my cam uh, work. I've got all the, all the drawing is done, 
Um, I just needed to do um, I need to do the cam part of it. So I, now that I know what I've got, now that I'm using and I've got my strategy, we'll move forward. I know there's some discussion around using these kinds of tool holders. Um, and not everybody likes them, especially for CNC work. Um, I see them, you know, what, I, what I like about this setup is I can use them on my manual mill as well. Um, just swap things out. Uh, one thing you can do, if, you, if you're afraid or you're worried about that, um, that they're not going to hold the, the cutter uh, firmly, you can get cutters like this one from Niagara that has a flat on it, right? So that set screw comes in, um, I believe the term for that is called a weld-in flat, W-E-L-D-O-N, right? But so it's got a flat in there and it helps secure it and lock it in place so that it can, it's not gonna spin or pull, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so I wouldn't be too worried about that part of it. Um, you know, for, for what most of us are doing that you know, we're not running these things at 20,000 RPM. We don't have to worry so much about the, you know, do they have to be perfectly balanced and all these things. My machine tops out at 4,300 RPMs. Um, you know, I did some, some work with these already and uh, you know, balance wasn't an issue at all. So just something to think about. With that, I'm gonna wrap this one up. Uh, thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. I, if you liked this video, you think this is helpful for you, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you're uh, not already subscribed, subscribe, share the channel. Um, one thing that I will note, I talked about tool offsets and libraries and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna go through the process that I used to set up my tool offsets using Linux CNC. Um, I've done some research, the documentation is okay. Uh, there are some videos, but not a whole lot. So to me, it meets Stanzi's at the Shade Shadeon HKW, if you don't know who I'm talking about, Stan Zinkowski's criteria of you know, a video that needs to be made. So I'm gonna make a video on how I did my uh, measuring for my offsets. Uh, I'll do that here shortly. And then uh, hopefully that'll help you if you decide to go this route uh, and uh, do that. But uh, again, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, comments, bring them in. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't heard about the summer bash this summer, you're living under a rock, I'll probably put another video you know, out on that one as well. But uh, thanks, appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you soon. Oh, yeah, one more thing. For those of you asking about the Tool 99 thing, uh, it was kind of a joke. I, John, the way he has his uh, library set up, especially for the class, is that tool 99 is the Z-height setter. Yes, there's you know, he has Heimer probes and all this stuff. He's not going to have that out for the, the classes. Um, so tool 99 is literally just a you know dial indicator, right? So that you can set your Z-height. We'll use this a whole lot more when we. I go uh, and I do the video to show you how I set my heights. But uh, yeah, for those of you who follow me on, on social media, you know, Instagram or you know, Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that, and were wondering about the whole Tool 99 thing, uh, it, it was kind of a nod, you know, nod of the, the head to, to John, but uh, yeah, my, my Tool 99. Thanks.